Hi, welcome back. In the previous video, I shared a quick tip on how to generate lens flares, which can be used in Affinity Photo. In today's video, I will share some techniques which will allow you to create your own lens flares in Affinity itself. Creating a lens flare composition can be time consuming the very first time. However, once all the required elements and the composition is ready, it is very easy to make variations from that. Anyway, let's dive into it. Here is the image from the last video. Let's set the blend mode of the lens flare layer back to normal and look of which elements the lens flare is made out of. There's a light source with rays, some small light rays and various halos. Let me create a new document and go through the steps on recreating these elements in Affinity. First, a simple halo. Just draw a circle and add a live Gaussian filter to it. By adjusting the opacity of the blur, you can control the outer edge softness. To finish up this halo, duplicate it and add it as a child to the original circle. Set the blend mode to erase and make it smaller. If we now increase the blur of this inner circle, you get this nice transition. Cool, I will park this for now. Here is a power tip for you. If you want maximum flexibility, instead of a circle, use a polygon. Let me show you what I mean. I'll add a polygon and change the sides to 6. I think this works best. Let's repeat the same steps. But instead of duplicating it, let's duplicate it as linked. As before, move the linked polygon to become a child of the original and set its blend mode to erase. If we resize it, something strange happens. Any ideas? Well, it is because of the blending mode is also linked. We now have two polygons with erase. We can fix this by going to the links panel and disabling the link for blending options. Now that this is fixed, we can fix the blend mode of the parent and increase the Gaussian blur in the filter. Great. Now the cool part. Because this is a polygon, I can adjust its properties, like the number of sides or the curvature. And by changing the curvature, I can even make it a circle. How cool is that? Later, when we have a lens flare composition, we can easily adjust the halo types from circle to hexagon. Just to give you an idea how these halos work, let me duplicate and make a simple composition. By adjusting the opacity, size and color, we can create these cool effects already. Let's continue with the next element, a light source with beams. For this, I will start with the beams by adding a double star. Set the point radius to 100% and the inner radius to 1%. This will create the shape we are looking for. Now duplicate and rotate a couple of times until you have a nice set of rays. Optionally, you can make some rays bigger to create interesting rays, but I'll keep it simple for now. We are missing the light source. Let's add this by adding a circle with a live Gaussian blur. In order to achieve a realistic light source, 
I will add multiple circles with different blur ratios and opacities. There it is. It looks good enough for me. Let's continue with the next element, a halo with multiple colors. I will be using a donut this time. In order to get multiple colors in the donut, I'm going to use a radial fill. Let me zoom into the visible area of the donut and add a rainbow palette to it. To separate a color, you can add a color in between with black or zero opacity. As with all these lens flare elements, a blur is needed. With the blend ranges, you can control the separation of the colors with black. I think this looks pretty cool. Now it is time to add another type of halo, a filled halo with two colors. A circle will work for this. After I adjust the colors and the transition position, we get an amazing halo. If I duplicate and combine these two, it is already looking pretty awesome. Final element I would like to share with you is the light ray, which you see in some lens flares. Just add that thin rectangle and then add a longer but thinner rectangle and combine them. Of course, do not forget to blur them. In order to fade them out at the beginning and at the end, a gradient line fill will work perfectly. You can now copy and paste as much as you need for your flare composition and group them. By adding a recolor adjustment, we can give it a different color if needed. Do not forget to move the recolor to the group to contain it only to the line group we just created. I think we're done. Oh wait. Before I continue, let me add another element which is very common in light flare images. A color gradation. I will just draw a shape and fill it with a gradient line fill. After adjusting the colors, a Gaussian blur to make it smooth as the rest. Another pro tip for you here is instead of using a Gaussian blur, you can also use a motion blur to get more interesting looks. Before I try these elements out on an image, here is another tip to adjust the overall brightness of the complete lens flare. This is quite easy. Just take one halo, for example from the light source, and make this bigger and increase its opacity and blur.
OK, let me undo that and test our elements out on the image. Just to make things simple, I will do a merge visible and copy this layer to the photo and apply the screen blend mode. Not bad at all. The locations of the halos and the lights don't make sense, but the overall effect is pretty awesome. By moving the layer, I can get a feel how the layers work in different areas. Now you know the basics. Let's view our lens flare layer we used in the previous video. Using the techniques I explained, I will recreate this exact lens flare. This will take some time, so I will speed up the video, but the steps I apply are exactly the same steps I explained earlier. So here it is, on the left the image we created from photop.com and on the right our own lens flare. To test out our image I will do a merge visible and copy the created layer to our photo with the layer from photop.com. If I switch between them you see they are almost identical. The cool part of having your own light flare composition is that you can group everything 
and then copy the group to the photo. Because you have all the elements of the lens flare, you can adjust them exactly as you need by changing their properties. Also, you can add or remove elements to make the lens flare exactly the way you want. I have just speeded up the rest of the video, but it is just repositioning, changing opacities or blurs and adding some additional halos. Just to give you an idea how easy it is to customize the lens flare. I hope you liked this video and thanks so much for watching this long, long video.